Welcome back to Hero Review episode 11, and today we got Ezio Auditore from the Assassin's Creed franchise. Real quick, a big shout out to Call Me Woody for suggesting Ezio, and make sure you let me know which hero I should review next down in the comments, but that's enough talk, let's figure this out. Afraid to handle things yourself. Your sister seemed quite satisfied with the handling I gave her. Born into nobility in Florence, Italy in the year 1459, Ezio lived a pretty carefree lifestyle where he'd just do goofball stuff, you know, climb churches and stuff like that, do parkour, a lot of just goofball, old-fashioned stuff they did in Florence back in the good old days. However, all this would come to an end once Ezio's father, Giovanni, discovered a plot to assassinate the leader of Florence. Explaining this conspiracy to a friend named Uberto, Hey, Uberto, there's this conspiracy. Someone's gonna try to kill the leader of Florence. Wow, what a surprise. Wow, didn't know that. Ha ha ha, wink. Um, okay, that was kind of weird, but I'm gonna ignore it. Uberto would destroy the evidence clearing the auditory name and would pronounce the family guilty of treason, resulting in Ezio's father dead, his brother dead, his other, this other guy, I think it's his younger brother, dead. Inheriting some assassin heritage from his dad, Ezio would begin training in the art of assassinry, or is that the word? Assassinology? That'd be freaking sick. I'd totally major in assassinology. Anyways, Ezio would go on to hone his skills and try to take down the Templar Order who ordered the execution of his family. I think, first of all, I have to say, it's hard not to see a clear inspiration to that of Batman because yeah Ezio is Italian Bruce Wayne rich kid who loves to sleep around uh oh no his family's dead now he's got to be a badass and kill the bad guys while it does seem like a Bruce Wayne knockoff it's a popular motive that we've seen many many times and that's because it works the death of his parents and the revenge that follows is great for making us sympathize with Ezio and the charismatic youngin who doesn't care turned badass it's a really easy character arc to get right that being said, it works well here, and I think the parts of the game before Ezio actually turns full assassin are some of the best. It's a played out motive, but it works. I'll kill you for what you've done! Guards, arrest him! Okay, okay, Ezio's personality is sort of complicated, right? The personality for me is like a hot pocket because that first bite, you're like, okay, damn, this is this is kind of awesome. It's warm, it's tasty, but then as it goes on, you get some cold bites and you're like, wait, wait, what is even happening? I think that at the beginning of the game, Ezio has a lot of personality. He's young, charismatic, stupid, but like in a lovable way, and he's actually pretty funny. However, once the game gets moving and his dad gets got, I feel like Ezio loses some of his charm. I'm not a crazy person who's like, Ezio, I know. I know your dad just died okay but you should be making jokes why, why so damn man but i feel like all throughout the story Ezio just becomes less and less interesting he turns from an entertaining character who's full of life and he's young and entertaining to some just good guy there's nothing wrong with Ezio being a good guy but i feel like at the end there's nothing more to Ezio's character than he's the good guy and he has to stop the bad guys he does have some moments where his character and interesting personality shine through but for the most part it leaves me wanting more. Like, Ezio, now you're just somebody that I used to know. L'oscurità, accettate il suo abbraccio, requiescant in pace. I'm gonna be honest, this is a hard category for me because Assassin's Creed 2 feels like a really long game. I know it's not, but it feels like it. As I've mentioned earlier, the beginning prologue stuff is great, but I think overall, the pacing is so bad, it kind of ruins Ezio, and he's just not as good as he could have been. Ezio as a character has some pretty cool scenes, both in the character development part and the badass part, but there's also just so much boring. For every mission that's cool and you're like, oh man, this is an interesting story, right? The Pope's evil, there's some apples going on, I don't know. There's a mission where it's like, Oh, mamma mia, you gotta take a Badabinski, a, a Gadaginski to school. And then you just walk in a crowd of basket weavers for like 45 minutes. So I think overall, SEO scenes are like, if you take a can of Dr. Pepper, right? Dr. Pepper representing all the good stuff. It's tasty, right? And then you pour it into a pool. The pool representing all the, the mediocre and kind of boring. The good is still there, but it gets to a point where there's just so much bland and mediocre. It's like, well, is the Dr. Pepper even here at all? It's so hard to see. Nothing shines through. When I look back at Assassin's Creed, Creed 2, I think it's a decent enough game, but like, ask me what I remember. The intro, Da Vinci, and the evil Pope at the end. That's about it. So while Ezio does have some cool moments, there's just a lot of boring and, and it kind of holds him back. Will not take this from me. It's finished, Rodrigo. Lay down your arms. 
and they want to make sure that they end. What I will say though is that I really respect Ezio's efforts to do good. I love that when the game starts off, he's on this revenge mission, but then he genuinely wants to just help the world at the end. I think that's one thing the game does really well is that Ezio does grow and mature in a very natural way. This is probably the only time you'll hear me saying this, but Ezio does everyone a great favor by taking down the Pope. Like, props to you, my guy. What I also like about Ezio is that by the end of the journey, he has actually learned a lot and his decision not to kill Rodrigo, it does show a lot of maturity. I really like that. At best, may it never change. And may it never change us. Ezio has a popular and played out motive, but it still works and sets up some solid growth for him as a character. Personality wise, he starts off strong, but kind of gets lost in the sauce as the story meanders for a little too long. He does have some solid growth though, and where he starts the story versus where he ends, I really do like that. I'm gonna give Ezio a six. I'm surprised to see you here. I thought the Patsy hired others to do their dirty work. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think of Ezio down in the comments and who I should review next. Subscribe if you want. If not, hey, that's fine. That's fine. You know, in enjoy your life. Enjoy your day. We're just gonna, we're just gonna vibe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.